we are going to be taking a look today at using Perfectly Clear. And uh, I'd appreciate if you guys get a chance, you could use the Q&A pod. We've got that open. Good evening, Alan. Thanks for uh, posting in there. I'm assuming that everybody can hear me okay. Uh, if there is any problem with the audio, now would be a great time to let me know in that Q&A pod if you're having a hard time hearing me for any reason, other than your speakers are off. Hopefully, that's not the reason. But uh, if you are watching via Google Plus or via the pop-up in the Hangout app, you can actually comment in the Q&A pod. So thank you guys for doing that. We're going to go ahead and get started here. All right. So what are we covering tonight? Uh, just give me a thumbs up, guys, that you can hear me so I know that the audio is coming through loud and clear. Just going to do a quick check here myself. And let me know that you guys can hear things good. You hear me loud and clear. All right, well, let's get started. Thank you guys for tuning in. We are talking about Photoshop and Lightroom tonight. We're going to work with both some raw images and some JPEGs and TIFFs. And I'm going to show you secrets of how to get the best looking image. Now, I like images that have just the right amount of contrast, a little bit of sharpening, good details, the ability to really see the contrast in the image. And uh, I just want to make sure that you guys have some ideas on how to do that. And we're going to pull this off using the built-in tools in Photoshop and Lightroom and then combine it with Perfectly Clear, which is a special plugin that works on both platforms. And we'll also give away a copy of that later on tonight. And if you've been sitting on the fence about picking it up, today is Cyber Monday, so they're running it at 40% off if you have any interest. All right, let's jump in. I'm going to share my screen. And uh, let me just put the Q&A here off to the side real quick. I'm going to click Screen Share. There we go. Set the questions over here. And uh, hopefully you guys are seeing Adobe Bridge. And what I'm going to show you is a bunch of different approaches. So I've got a few different things we can do here. <coughs> and what I want to do is start with this image here. This is one of those images that's pretty well put together. If we look at it, it's in focus, it's well exposed, but it's just not quite as sharp as I'd like. I don't really have the strong blacks and whites that I'd like. So let's go ahead and open that into Photoshop. I'll send that across. There we go. And what I want to do with this image is bring out some of the details. Well, there's a few ways we can go about this. First up, one trick that I sometimes tell folks is just consider duplicating a layer. You can right click and duplicate. So you have two copies and then you could change the blending mode. Using a mode like multiply is going to combine the two layers together and add up their values. Now that gave us really rich blacks, a little bit more than I wanted, but I'll back that off just slightly. And you see if I toggle that on and off that it did a good job of bringing out some of those details. Well, let's select those two layers and right click and convert those to a smart object. That's going to tuck both of those layers into one new layer. And this makes it easy to attach a filter. You can tell by the little icon here that this is a smart object. Now, this is pretty cool. And it uh, looks like you guys are still hearing me loud and clear, so good. And what we're going to do is apply the perfectly clear filter. Filter, Avantech Imaging perfectly clear. Now this will invoke the filter and brings up by default a side-by-side -side view, but you can click and see a single view. And what I want to do is pop the colors, make it a little more vivid. And I like how that's getting nice and rich there. But what I want to do is take it a little bit further. Let's try details for a second. That's actually a little better. I like that. And under sharpening, I'm going to crank sharpening up. Now, I always recommend viewing at 100% if you want to judge sharpening. This is a lot easier, so we can press the Z key to zoom to 100%, and now we're really seeing the details in the feather. Now, the sharpening here with Perfectly Clear is pretty intense, and I like that. Look at how it just brings out the details in those feathers. But I'll apply minimal noise correction, 
just to make sure that we're not introducing any new noise, and then increase the depth and go with high contrast. So now I've got nice rich blacks, really vibrant whites, but we still have detail there in this eye. You can see that there's texture that didn't get blown away in the eyelid, which I really love. So if you look at the before and the after, the ability to pop the black and the white and sharpen has just brought a whole new life to this image, which was perfectly exposed to begin with. So if you take a look at that, let's compare the before and after. So here's my original. Let's just take this here. We'll take our history panel. And what I'm gonna do is up top, make a snapshot. So now I can see the original and my new version. And what we did there was we opened the image, duplicated it and blended it, and then backed it off just a little to add up the information in the file. And if I'm working with a non-raw file, I like to do this technique of stacking the image and blending it with a copy of itself because it gives us more overall information to work with. Then we made a smart object and we really sharpened and popped things with perfectly clear there. It's amazing to me how those feathers just come absolutely to life. So there's a simple Photoshop recipe of stack and blend and then a little bit of filtering with smart objects to really make that come to life. All right, remember in that Q&A pod, if you guys would like to post any questions, feel free to do so. I'll try to check that periodically and we will be drawing a name randomly. And actually, I'm in a good mood tonight. We'll draw two names to give away two copies of Perfectly Clear for those of you who might not have a copy of it yet. So you're welcome to check that out. All right, let's go on to another image and talk about another technique. Now this time, I'm gonna go with a raw file and let's take something that needs a little bit of details brought out. Let's go with this one here of a fence. And I'm gonna open this up. Now you can open this up with Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw, it doesn't matter to me. It's the same tool, just a different visual interface. And let's talk about a couple of these sliders. First up, whether you're using Perfectly Clear or not, I always recommend taking a look at the Lens Corrections tab. This is where you can say things like make the image level or make the vertical lines vertical. And if you look at the before and after, it's a pretty amazing fix or do a balanced adjustment. And I like that there. Now all the perspective issues have been compensated for and we've got a nice clean horizon and good verticals on the wood. Additionally, while you're here, feel free to enable lens profile correction if you know the camera and lens that you shot with. I know that this was on a Nikon and a lot of times that information is embedded. And you see there that it fixed some of the wide angle distortion and removed a little bit of vignetting at the edges, which is pretty cool. While we're at it, Check for chromatic aberration. This particular image doesn't look to have it, but sometimes with high contrast images with really bright backgrounds, you will see that. Or on cheaper lenses, you might notice that. All right, that's looking pretty good. And remember, if you want, you can update the image if it's not using the most recent processing. All right, that looks good. And let's come on over here to the basic tab. Now, I prefer what Perfectly Clear can do for shadows and highlights, but looking at my histogram, I want to make sure that I've got a good base exposure. Now, a lot of folks don't realize that the histogram is interactive, so you could just grab it and start to pull over. For example, there I'm lifting the highlights so that we get some nice brightness in the shot. And I can grab the whites and pull that over a little more to get some good white into the areas that need it and grab the middle and balance that out a little. And you see that works pretty well. You could of course stick with sliders too, but I love that this is interactive. Now let's check the next tab, which is detail. Sharpening is one of those things that people struggle with. And what I recommend is you punch into 100% when you want to sharpen. This is gonna help. Now sharpen does not fix an out of focus photo. And this photo's in focus and it's pretty solid, but some of the finer details just aren't coming through. So if I increase sharpening here, you'll see that some of the texture starts to pop. But the challenge is, is if you do it and you sharpen everywhere, well, we're also adding a bunch of noise into the background. But if you hold on the option of the Alt key and you drag the masking slider, you can now control what 
is sharpened. So in this case, only the white areas are being sharpened. So I'm putting detail into that metal texture and into the wood, but I'm completely ignoring the background, not putting in any extra noise into those shadowy areas inside the barn. That looks pretty cool. All right, I like that. And what I'm gonna do is make sure to open this as a smart object. If I click on the workflow text at the bottom down here, this allows me to tell it to open in Photoshop as a smart object. So now when I click open object, it sends it into Photoshop and it keeps it as a smart object, which is pretty cool. This means if you double click, you're right back into Adobe Camera Raw where you can work with it. Now, I like this type of workflow. For example, if I'm in Lightroom and I've made a few adjustments to an image, let's just take a look at this one here. Maybe I developed a little bit and played with my exposure slightly. Same thing, interactive histogram, pull over the highlights a little, grab the white point and pop that so we get good detail, but I don't wanna clip the details in the fur there. Massage the shadows a little bit and move over the basic midtones. looks pretty good. Scroll down and you'll see the same tabs as before. There's details so I can adjust the sharpening and then hold down the option or alt key to adjust the mask. So we're just sharpening the whiskers and the edges of the fur and the eyes, which makes it look a lot better. Mm, that feels pretty good to me. Down here is lens correction, same thing. Enable profile corrections, and it recognized the lens, got rid of the wide angle distortion, and fixed some of the vignetting at the edges. All right, that's pretty cool. And now, with that image selected, I could say that I would like to edit that. So I'll just select it and say, open it in Photoshop, edit in, open it in Photoshop as a smart object. And it hands it off in the exact same workflow. There it is, and it's a smart object. So either case, it's exactly the same there. I did two different images, but made the same types of adjustments. And you see that whether you use Photoshop with Camera Raw or Lightroom, it's the exact same dang tool. All it is is a user interface change, so you use the tool that you're more comfortable with. All right, let's see if there's any questions so far. Uh, everyone says things are good. How does sharpening technique compare to Lightroom's clarity slider? Well, Brian, that's actually a good question. We're gonna talk about clarity a little bit later. Clarity is not actually sharpening. Clarity is selective contrast. Sharpening removes or masks some of the details at the edges. And so it really helps bring out fine details like fur and hair and eyes and really high detailed areas. Clarity, totally different. So we're gonna talk about that here in just a second and we'll run through it a little bit. So good question, Brian, we will talk about clarity, uh, but instead of using clarity in Photoshop or Lightroom, which is a little heavy handed in my opinion, I'm gonna do that in perfectly clear with a slider called depth. But if you want to see it here, same thing, double click, and look, it opens up. And what Clarity does is add selective contrast. Now, if I crank that over, it starts to look awesome. But the challenge here is clipping. And a lot of folks don't understand clipping, but that's what these little triangles are for. Show me shadow clipping and highlight clipping. And so there, the highlights are clipped. The red here indicates that the red channel has clipping. So if this were to be printed, there would be a lack of detail there and no ink coverage, and it would look pretty bad. So that's why we have that, so we can play with things and recover the highlights. Now, if we start to take the blacks too far, oh, they look nice and rich, but they're clipping. And that's the problem with clarity, is that it's very easy to clip your image because it can go too far. So let me, let me go ahead and double click that slider to reset it. I do like recovering the highlights a little bit there. That looks better on the face so that we have detail. And a lot of folks don't know how to turn that option on. Let's hit okay so it updates. And I'm gonna switch back over to Lightroom for a second and you'll notice there they are, exact same things. You can click to show the shadow and the highlight clipping and there's the highlights being clipped right there on the face. So same thing. We'll just tone down the highlights ever so slightly to bring that back. So hopefully that makes sense with clarity. So let me know if that adjusted it for you there. If you feel like you understand what clarity does, selective contrast, it goes after the areas that 
tend to need contrast the most, which is pretty cool. But let me show you that ability to do something similar with Perfectly Clear. So I've got this image selected, and I'll just choose Filter, Athentech Imaging, Perfectly Clear. And this is available as a plugin for both Photoshop and Lightroom. And what I really like about it, and I've had a lot of time with these guys, is their actual let's just call it nerdy scientists who are super into digital images. And they got a ton of folks on their team who study how cameras work, what cameras do wrong, and what they can fix. So I'm a big fan. I've been using it for a long time. Again, let's press Z to zoom in, and we start to see what's happening here. Now, I'm going to back off things a little bit. Let's just go to the details preset, take a look at things. And that's helping. Not too bad. We can move around here to take a look. And what I want to be careful of is the amount of sharpening and a little bit of noise reduction there to clean that up. Now, this is shot from far, but it's starting to look pretty good there. And I like the overall image. Remember, clicking before and after. And I love how the whites and the darker shadows have been lifted, while the details here in the fur are still preserved. That feels pretty good. Let's bring out the vibrancy a little bit to rich in the colors but it doesn't clip. So same thing, nice rich reds, but we haven't clipped the color. And then the ability to add depth. So depth here is really kind of cool. It finds areas like the ears there and brings out the blacks and the grays. So you get more of a 3D image feel. Let's click OK. And that'll come up. And I'll show you the before and the after. And that image just pops more. All right, back to this image that we opened up as a smart object. If you want to, you can always apply the Camera Raw filter, and it's very similar to Camera Raw. So this will allow you to go in and do a second pass, which a lot of people don't think about. So if you really like sharpening, and I'm not saying that you should always do this, but some folks will actually double sharpen. I can crank that up for a second pass, and then hold on that option key again to adjust the masks. And so now I sharpened once inside the image, a little bit of clip there in the black, so let's lift those blacks up ever so slightly. There we go. And click OK. And you'll notice there that the second pass of sharpening is pretty cool. It brought out a little more detail, particularly in the metal texture. So I sharpened the raw file, and then I sharpened it again with the second pass of Camera Raw. All right, let's add Perfectly Clear. And what I want to do here, I'll just choose Filter, Athentech Imaging, Perfectly Clear. And I want to bring this out as a landscape shot. And so I like how that just goes in and pulls out some of the details. It also tends to make greens and browns a little more vivid and lush. That feels pretty good. I could adjust exposure to taste. That's pretty much there. And I want to richen the color with some vibrancy, but tell it to use a more standard intensity. And so now the richness in that shadows, the texture in the wood, is just coming through better. So let's hit OK, call up that history panel, and this allows me to easily see the original, and that was not the actual raw file. If we step inside there, it's you could actually see what that started like. It looked like that to begin with. So you see we went from that to that, which is pretty cool. I'm going to hit cancel so those changes don't propagate forward, but you see it updates. All right, let's check how we're doing on questions. Thank you, Brian. I'm glad that that explanation for clarity worked for you. All right, let's keep going forward then, and uh, I'll show you some new images. Let's do something that's kind of tough. Uh, we've already done birds. Let's take a JPEG image. This is one of those instances where I liked the shot, but it just didn't have the life that I wanted. I was a bit far away. There was just not quite the richness here, and I want to bring this to really come to life. So let's start by opening that into Photoshop. And one of the things that I like about Perfectly Clear is if you've got an image, particularly a JPEG, and it just doesn't feel quite right, well, let's convert that to a smart object and run perfectly clear. And I'll just choose the landscape preset. Now, if we click the before and after, I love how the water's coming through here. And the blacks 
in that brick that were lost are now lush and the colors are rich. Let's punch in Z for zoom to 100% there and I'm gonna sharpen a little more. Now if you overdo it, you start to see a lot of noise. So let's balance that out. That feels pretty good and a little more vibrancy and I'll click OK. Then I'll do the exact same thing. What a lot of folks don't realize is that it's easy to stack things. So here's a little trick. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now you're probably wondering why in the heck we're blurring the photo. Well, that's because the blurred copy has its own blending modes. So if I double click there on that little arrow, I can now change the mode. So we can go with something like soft light. And now it's taken that blurred copy and layered it on top. I like that. If you take a look there at the before and the after, perfectly clear, brought the colors back to a great natural state. And now I could start to color grade for emotion where I'm pushing it that much further. That's feeling pretty cool. Another thing that I'd like to point out is this. Let's make a selection here on the water. I'll choose select color range. And this lets me click to make a selection. Now remember, you can hold down the shift key and drag through and it'll start to make more of a selection. And this works pretty well. We got the water there. Let's adjust the fuzziness a little bit. That feels about right. And I can click to add to that if needed, if there's parts that seem to be missing. And this is kind of like a useful magic wand. So you hold down the option key to subtract and the shift key to add, and that's pretty cool. Remember, you can fuzz that out a little, and I like that. Oops, too far. There we go. And I'm gonna click OK to make a selection. So now, if I wanna make an adjustment here, I could toss on something like the hue saturation adjustment. And you see that it automatically masked it based on that selection. So now, I'll click Colorize and you see the water is highlighted. Now, I don't want green water. This is not the you know, St. Patrick's Day Parade, but let's adjust that a little bit. And you're still thinking that looks pretty fake, but we're not done yet. Let's saturate that, push this a little bit, and darken it down. And what we're looking for is to bring out a rich sort of blue. Holding down the B for brush, I could also adjust the size of my brush, and easily paint in to add to the water. There we go. Or flip over to black, black subtracts, and pick up any stray pixels. Now I pushed this really far so it would stand out and it was clear where we were working. There we go, add. And now we could adjust that. So let's take that into a mode like overlay and lower it down or multiply, and it starts to darken that water and bring it to life a little bit. That feels pretty good. Now, I'm gonna command click to load that selection again, this time grabbing a gradient. Now, a gradient is a fill layer, and you can grab it down here under the, let me find it, not FX, this one here, and I could choose gradient, and this time, I'm just gonna go from a dark to a light. And you can adjust the angle a little. You can feel pretty good. You can say, you know what, not a pure white. Take that to a little bit of a gray. That feels pretty good. And I'll click OK. Adjust the angle a little bit. There we go. And now, same thing, soft light. And you can adjust the opacity but now you start to get a nice gradiated filter. So you see that the water has a little bit more texture to it and depth as it comes in. And that feels pretty good. Now, what I like to do is even things out a little bit. So after I've gotten it to where I want it, I'll add a color lookup table. This is an adjustment layer that most people don't know about, and you'll find lookup tables, including film stocks. So you could toss on a stock like a Fuji or a Kodak. And now it does a nice job sort of unifying everything. And I feel that the water has gone back to being a bit more photographic. Or we can take an aged stock. But I like that. 
And if we take a look here at the original, let's take a look at the history panel and make a snapshot. You see that we took it from a pretty washed out, boring image to something that was restored using perfectly clear, then popped the color with a Gaussian blur and a blending mode, and then took it a little bit further and started adding in things like hue saturation and a little bit of an opacity change and blending that all together. And remember, these are just adjustment layers. So if I need to, I can take the key here, lower the opacity, and simply paint to add on. And this will add to that selection. Or better yet, grab the smudge tool, which is a tool that a lot of people don't know about. It's right here. And you could say that you would like to smudge things. So I'll just say smudge the light pixels. And now I could just push those in like they were wet paint and push them into the rocks until they feel like they've wrapped around things the way that I want. There we go. Not bad. Let's grab that adjustment layer and just push a little bit. And now my wet paint is more organic and I can get the results that I'd like. All right, that feels pretty good. In fact, I'm gonna save that because I like that so much. I might actually post that later. Let me just capture that. Every once in a while I come up with something that I like. And uh, I'm gonna hit save. And let's see if there's any questions so far. So uh, let's see here. I shoot a lot of insect macros. Hey, I got an insect shot, we'll do that next. So uh, sometimes perfectly clear blows out my highlights. How do I prevent this? Well, the way that you can do it is use it on a smart object, which I'm gonna show you in just a second, Scott. We'll do an insect because I just happen to have one. I'm fairly new, what is a smart object? So Heloise, a smart object is a way to put a raw file or a layer inside of another layer. It's kind of a nest. And that smart object can have filters applied. So I save this image and I close it. Now, if I ever need to, and I go back and I open it, you'll see that all the filters are still live. By the way, we were working with this one. We sent it over from Lightroom and I hit save. Well, when I go back to Lightroom here, it's gonna be added into my Lightroom library and it will stick right next to that one. So if we take a look at the whole library here, not just the last import, you'll see that that gets handed off and it's gonna get stored with the file. So now if you ever need it, you can actually go back, grab it and reopen that and it's gonna lie. So let's take a look at all photographs there and you'll see that we have the different images. So there's the edited file that was sent over to Photoshop. There's the raw. There's the edited one, and if I simply say, well, go ahead and edit that again, and we open that up, it's gonna actually hand it off. And you'll be able to work with it over in Photoshop. You'll have the smart objects, all the layers will be intact, and it's pretty cool how you can then edit the filter after the fact. So that works pretty well. So hopefully, Heloise, that answers it. And uh, let's see, uh, is it always better to do any noise reduction on your raw file before you start using Perfectly Clear? Well, I believe in getting a good, clean file. I think that Perfectly Clear is outstanding for fixing a bunch of things. It does have extremely good noise reduction, so I am sort of on the fence there. I like to sharpen, but I don't do a ton of noise reduction uh, inside the image because I find that Perfectly Clear's noise reduction is really quite outstanding. Now, let's take a look at the example Scott was asking for, which was an insect. Now, this is not quite a macro shot, but uh, and it's not... Uh, I was not as close as I'd like, but it's a little challenge. Let's see if we can bring out some of those details. And then we'll also take one here. Let's just open both of those up in camera raw. <coughs> and uh, we got some clipped highlights there. Now that you know how to see these, that really helps. So let's recover those highlights a little bit so they're not clipped. There we go. And let's sharpen a little bit here. Pull up the noise. Grab the sharpening slider and hold down the masking to just get the edges. There we go, not bad. That's helping. We'll do the chromatic aberration and the camera profile correction there. It was shot on a Nikon, so it picked up a few things, not bad. Let's do the same thing here for this image. We'll enable the lens profile correction. And this is one of those cases where a ton of detail has been lost. So let's just bring that a little bit more into shape. In this case, I'm gonna actually overexposed slightly so we start to get some detail in the fur and I like that I'm gonna favor this being a little bit hot 
but we'll recover the highlights here just a bit so that the background's not overblown. Basically, we're splitting the shadows and highlights. Now, we've got some good detail in the fur, and I could back the whole exposure down slightly. All right, let's open both of those up as smart objects, and then we'll do a Lightroom example next. And uh, what we're gonna do here is be able to affect these images a little bit. So there we go, let's just get that open. And now, it's a smart object. I did a few adjustments in, and here's that insect example. So if I run perfectly clear, on this insect example, one of the things that's important to realize is two things. First up, you can run it, choose a preset that you like, and then if you decide for any reason that there's parts that you don't quite like or it's a little too much in one area, once you've run that, you'll notice it has a mask. Click on that mask, grab your paintbrush, and now you can just paint. Black subtracts. If I don't want to subtract completely, I could use a lower opacity brush and I can get a nice soft brush and just paint and build that up. There we go. And I'm just painting backwards there to restore the original area. So if you feel like you like what it did in one spot but not another, you could totally just paint on that mask there and you see that it toned down those areas by blending back in the original image. I'm just shift clicking on the mask to disable it so you can see it. So that works really well. Additionally, if you're using a smart object, you can of course grab a tool like the quick selection tool, avoid the tragic wand, it's very outdated. And this quick selection tool lets you click and drag on your image to make a basic selection. And so I'm selecting the gorilla here, there we go. Hold down the Option or the Alt key to subtract just a little bit. There we go, not bad. Let's get the little pocket out. After you always do that, strongly recommend clicking the Refine Edge button, which makes it easy to see what's happening. Click Smart Radius and crank it up, and it will analyze the edges and usually does a good job. If you need to, you can paint on an area to subtract or Alt Paint to remove it. And this allows you to paint over an area to force it to reanalyze if you wanted to look at an area and try again. That looks pretty cool. I'll click OK, and now I've got an active selection. So let's run perfectly clear on this, and it's gonna affect just the gorilla. Now, in the preview, it looks like it's affecting everything, but it's not actually going to do that. So let's do that, lift up the exposure just a little bit, and really make the tones come through a bit. That feels pretty good. And let's play with the skin and depth bias. We'll go with a little bit brighter there. Higher contrast. No, I think high def's about right. That feels pretty good. I like where that's working. A little too much there on that shadow. So let's balance that out there. We'll tone the depth down just a little bit. And that feels pretty good. All right, I like the fidelity there. That feels good. And let's just bring out a little bit of vibrancy and click OK. And you'll see that it affects just that area because of the mask. And in the spot that feels just a little clipped, grab my paintbrush, click on the mask. In this case, black subtracts. So let's just brush that in there. And I can paint backwards in any areas that feel too much. There we go. I like that one now, before and after. That feels good, and I'll just nest that in a smart object again, convert to smart object, and this time I could say select, and I could just tell it to reselect, and it will load the previous selection. Select, inverse, and run perfectly clear. And now it's gonna run just on the background. So I could say, you know what, let's go with a nice lush landscape image. Let's tone down that exposure just a little bit. There we go, that feels about right. Let's make it really vibrant in the background there. I like that. And uh, higher definition, feels good. Don't worry about what's happening here with the gorilla because we're not gonna actually see that part. And that feels pretty good. I hit okay and it brought back the detail in the background. Now to unify everything, toss on one of those color lookup tables, 
and select something like a simple film stock. There we go. And that's going to unify. And I like that just to sort of give it an even out look. If you want, you could put a little bit more in. And there you have it. We've been able to bring out some of the details on our subject. So works pretty well. Let's go ahead to Lightroom and we'll take another example of an image, but let's see if there's any questions. We covered the insect macro, that's good. We talked about noise reduction, and I'm glad that answered your question, Heloise, so good. Let's take another image here, this one of the lion. And I'm gonna open that up. And this is not my photo, this is one that was loaned to me. And I like the hair here on the lion, but I wanna bring that out a little bit. So we could develop this, this is actually just a JPEG. And in the develop module, same thing, I can take a look at this. Now, oh, it says this file can't be found. Hmm, I wonder where I put that one. Let me grab one more. I'll take something else that I uh, just brought in. Let me go to my previous import. There we go. And let's do this. This is a, a good one that's similar, or no, we'll do the brown bear. This one should be fine. So we got a brown bear, not a bad exposure. And remember, under the develop module, same thing, you could apply a little bit of sharpening if you want. I'll take that up a little bit and then hold down the option or alt key and drag the masking slider. And that's helping. A little bigger radius and detail to go after the fur. Not bad. And then we simply hand it off. Now, you can go right to perfectly clear if you want, and you can say edit in perfectly clear. And that's fine. This will bring up the perfectly clear dialog. And just choose to include your Lightroom adjustments. Now, I normally send it over to Photoshop because I've got Creative Cloud, or if you have the Creative Cloud Photography Plan, you have both apps. And that gives you that smart object workflow, which I like, so you can go back and forth and tweak a bit. But if you're just using Lightroom, Perfectly Clear is available for Lightroom, and you can take any adjustments you've done to your image in Lightroom and hand them off to Perfectly Clear. So now we can say, well, bring out those details just a little bit more. And you see that the fur is really popping, which is pretty cool. I can tone down the vibrancy or get rid of it. And that actually feels a little bit better to me. But I'm going to bring up the fidelity, make that vivid, which feels good, back off the depth. And I really like how some of the details in the face that were lost are brought back. Click Save and it will send the image back into Lightroom and put it into your catalog. So it's that simple. Let's take a shot here that has a lot of detail. Uh, this is a JPEG that was processed in camera, and I wanna put more detail in. I really love the texture here. I love the skin on this iguana. So let's hand that off, and I wanna bring it out a little bit more. I'm gonna go to Photoshop as a smart object. Now, I mentioned duplicating the image and playing with it. Remember, you can do things like adjust the blending modes here of the two copies. And a soft light version there just brought out some of the details in the shadows. I like that. Or here's an unusual use. Sometimes I'll add a black and white adjustment layer and then use the on image tool, this little finger gesture here, to click and drag on different parts of the image to create a custom black and white adjustment. Then blend it. We'll just put that in in soft light mode. And you see that it made the blacks a lot more interesting. But remember, you can still mask things. So if you don't want this area down here, just click and you can select that. Make that basic selection down there. Let's just grab the branch. Subtract here, the iguana, same idea. And this allows you to choose just the parts that you want. So there, I removed the branch selection. There we go, not bad. Get rid of the iguana. Click Refine Edge and Smart Radius. So it cleans that up a little bit. There we go. Grab my layer mask and I'll just say edit fill and fill with black. And that will subtract that part from the mask. So that black and white copy was pretty cool. It just brought out the richness. All right, now that's just an advanced technique, but let's do something simple with perfectly clear. 
I just nested that into one smart object, and I really want to get some extra detail here. So I'll bring up Perfectly Clear, and in this case, I'll start with some of the presets. Now, you might not think of using something like Beautify here, but it actually did some interesting things. I can go ahead, open up the exposure just a little bit, and play with this. Now, we don't need teeth whitening, and we're not doing any red eye or eye enhance, because this is going to be looking for human features. But I do like just a little bit here of some skin tone. And I'm going to pop the vibrancy, add some fidelity, and sharpen. Look at that sharpening there. Pay close attention to the eye. That is amazing. Look at how the scales around the eye have taken on dimensionality. Feels almost 3D. Now, the skin, well, nothing too major. I'm just going to leave that unchecked. But I love that sharpening. Small amount of noise reduction, and it removes. You see up here, the noise in the background was getting distracting. Just click, and it's gone. And it cleaned that noise up without softening the eye here. It detected noise in this out-of-focus area, so it killed that, but it brought out the details in the face, which is just amazing. I'm going to lift that exposure up just a little, and you notice as I adjust, it doesn't blow things out. So it lets me get a nice, clean image. A lot of depth, and let's play with high depth versus high contrast. I think I like high depth, and that feels really good. I'll click OK, and let's take a look. Not bad. A little bit of extra noise in that image there, so I'm going to double click on perfectly clear just to open that up. And I'm going to bring up the strength of the noise reduction just a little bit and back off sharpening slightly and click OK and let it update. Much better. So look at the eye there with the before and after. It really came through nicely. And that's pretty cool. And remember, you can always click on that mask to selectively hide. If we look at the history panel and take a snapshot, it's now easy to see where we started and where I took it. And the depth and the richness there of the image just feels pretty awesome. All right, let's see if there's any questions. Thanks for the mask idea and the blown out highlights with macros again. When I use the built-in noise reduction, I also get banding. And the image is 16-bit. Why is this happening? Well, I'm not sure, Scott. Uh, I don't usually see banding, but I would recommend making sure you're staying in 16-bit and also make sure you're working in a sRGB workspace. Uh, if you're getting into a really high contrast image, Perfectly Clear prefers to work in sRGB as opposed to Pro Photo or Adobe RGB. So you can control that when you open up your raw files as to what file format it works in, or you can adjust it. So before I open up an image, let me do that actually from Bridge here. And let's say I have this image here. I'll open that up in Camera Raw and get a basic exposure. We'll sharpen a little bit, mask slightly. There we go, got the edges, feels pretty good. Lens profile correction, that worked. Remove any chromatic aberration, not bad. Look at the exposure here, it's okay. I'm just gonna pull it out a little. Oh, there's clipping, so I'll be careful. That's one of the things I don't like about Photoshop. It makes it very easy to start to clip things because it develops everything all at once unless you start to make masks or other selections. And Perfectly Clear doesn't need that. So I'll actually just leave the exposure pretty much alone there. And down here at the bottom, click. And this is where you assign the color space. So Perfectly Clear actually prefers sRGB or Adobe RGB is OK. But Pro Photo is one of those things that you could avoid. And make sure you open that as 16 bits per channel. If you don't change that, it might be opening up as 8 bits, even though you shot with a higher bit rate. So I click OK. Look at that there. I see a little bit of exposure. So let's recover those highlights a little more. Not bad. Pull down the base exposure. And now all the clipping is gone. And I can open that object. It hands it off. And we'll invoke that. Filter, Athentech Imaging, perfectly clear. And it's going to do a perfect exposure. What I like here with details is it just simply found the right exposure. It darkened down the areas that need darkening, but didn't clip the blacks or the whites. 
Vivid is a little stronger, and Landscapes goes a bit more. Now, if it's a really dark image, you could fix dark, and it's going to expose things, or remove noise with fixed noise. But I think Vivid is actually the right one here. Apply a little more sharpening, and press Z to zoom into 100% to see that. And a little bit of noise reduction there. Not bad. That cleaned up well. And a little bit of vibrancy to get rich color and pop out. There we go. Let's zoom that back out. And remember, you can always see a side-by-side -side view to see what's happening. I'll click OK, and it hands it off. And we got it there. And by working in the correct color space, even though there's a lot of high contrast here from black to white and a lot of gradation, I don't see banding in that image. This is a type of image that would be prone to banding, and that feels pretty good. Remember, after you've done that, if you decide that you want to take a second pass, you can do so. Sometimes I'll simply toss on another adjustment. This is where I'll take the filter, blur, and apply a slight Gaussian blur, or something else that's fun, filter, blur, zoom blur, which is one of those unusual ones here, radial blur. This allows us to sort of set a point, and I'll say zoom, and pull that out. And when I click OK, it creates the zoom blur. It takes a second. Double click on that radial blur blending arrow, and I'll change the blend mode. Let's go to soft light and adjust the opacity just slightly. But I like that. It has less of an effect on the image because this part of the image wasn't very blurred. But where the blur got more intense radiating out from our subject, it did a nice job of intensifying things. So remember, we can click on that to turn it on or off and I really like that. And this is why we use smart objects. This gives us that ability to experiment and after running a filter, blend and tweak and adjust opacity. If it feels a little too strong, double click and not only can you change the blend mode, but you'll have the ability to simply fade it by tweaking the opacity and lowering it a little bit. So I'll just say, you know what, just a little bit more or a little bit less. And that's pretty cool. And it updates very, very quickly and non-destructively. All right, let's see how we're doing. Great information and suggestions. Good, I'm glad you're happy. Thank you. And uh, try the sRGB. I hope that works for you, Scott. And uh, what we're going to do here is, and there was a question there on what is perfectly clear. Well, we're going to be giving away two copies, so let me give you that. Perfectly clear is a product made by Athentech, and they've been making technology for digital imaging for a long, long time, about 13 years. And what they do is you can actually see if you take a look under their images and take a look at proof, you'll see what they're doing. And they started their career out making software used by professional printing labs. So it does things like the ability to auto adjust exposure and go ahead and get really lifelike colors and remove noise and tint and sharpen and add depth. And it's pretty cool stuff, red eye. And so basically it's about 20 different adjustments that can happen in one click, including a whole bunch of stuff that we didn't talk about that Levi Sim has done a webinar on to talk about removing blemishes in the skin or dark circles under the eyes or shiny skin or a little bit of contouring for a wide angle. So it's pretty cool stuff what it does, and that breaks down all the different adjustments. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can check that out, but they've been making software for printing labs for a long time. A couple of years ago, they ported their technology into a Photoshop plugin and a Lightroom plugin. So you can pull down a demo if you want, but they do have a sale going on right now, so it's 40% off for the uh, Cyber Monday Black Friday sale. Now you might be thinking, well, I, I haven't actually tried it, so I'm a little nervous. You can get that 40% out discount if you want, and then you still have 30 days to try it. So if you don't like the software, you just return it and they'll give you a money back guarantee. So you got 30 days to try it. So if you want that price, you can head on over to Athentech and take advantage of that holiday price. And I encourage you to check that out. It is just a simple way to take images and quickly enhance them. So if you've got an image that feels about right, or sometimes you feel like, you know, I got about as far as I can go. Well, what I like is, is that I can run this as an additional tool. 
So I can just run it or even use it as a quick batch process. And you can use this to quickly make client preview images. But in this case, I'm using it as a finishing tool. And so the ability to take something that you got as far as you thought you could do and say, you know what, make that optimized for landscape. Well, the whites are better. The blacks are better. The detail there just came through a lot more in the flowers. And I like how the petals have separation. Let's take two tough images here of really difficult exposures and let's open those up. Now, these are not raw files in this case. Let's just hand off something that's not a raw file and uh, maybe all you had was JPEGs or TIFFs. Well, we can open that up and you're gonna see that it does a great job of fixing dark images as a rescue tool. So we'll just get both of those to come in. There we go. And uh, there we have it and you see that it totally fixed the exposure problem without clipping the sky, which is pretty cool. I could say fix dark and it's even more aggressive and look at all that detail it pulled out and brought out, which was pretty cool. And I'll use that on tough interiors. This is one that is raw. So I'll say, you know what, this is pretty good. Let's recover those highlights. Let's pull the exposure down just a little, not bad but it gets a little difficult, right? And as we start to split tone and we will take those whites down a little more, but lift the blacks and it kind of gets frustrating with the back and forth dance. Well, photo, edit in perfectly clear and then we're gonna give away the prize guys. So thanks for hanging. And I'll hand that off. And I'm just gonna simply to tell it to fix the darks and make the color a little more vibrant. So there it is and look at that. Look at how it found the whites and the blacks and natural color, and there's the fixed dark. It's pretty amazing. Now, the windows were really blown out. This is a case where I actually shot in HDR, but I was showing you the original file. There are, of course, limitations of what a camera can capture, but that's pretty intense, and if it's a little too much, remember, you got a simple slider at the top there called opacity, so you can split the difference and back it off a little bit if needed. And you use that smart object workflow, well, you could totally paint out the windows if you needed to take them even further. Click save, and it puts it back into your Lightroom library, which is pretty cool. All right, let's bring that webinar back, and we're going to do the random drawing. So uh, I think you guys are all still there. One second. Let me just bring up my web browser. There we go. Thank you. I'm glad that helped. Uh, let's see, to answer the question about PC perfectly or makeup for limitations, your camera sensor really picks up true color. Fidelity is an amazing thing. Yep, I totally agree. It seems to wipe off the virtual haze. They've done some amazing things for landscape photos. I am not a portrait photographer. I'm a wildlife, nature, landscape, photojournalist, street photographer type. I was a journalism uh, student and worked in journalism for many years. I don't like making portraits unless I have to. And so I love what I can do to bring out those details. All right, well, let's take a look at all the questions that we answered, and we're gonna give away two copies. So let me just take a look here and see the answered questions. And we have one, two, three, four pages of questions. So let's open up random.org. And the first search we're gonna do is a search for, there we go, pages. So we'll take a look between page one and four. Generate. Page two, so up to the top, one, two. Now we've got one, two, three, four people. Generate. So Richard Denkart, if you would like to reach out to me at rich at photofocus.com, I'll send you a VIP code so you can download the software. Let's do this one more time. I told you I was gonna give away two copies. Generate, page four, there we go. One, two, three, four, five. So there's five possible people here. Random number generator, generate. One, Scott Tucker, you are our second winner. So guys, I totally appreciate you coming in, tuning in and watching this podcast. I hope you enjoyed it quite a bit. Let me just stop the screen share there. And uh, there I am, I'm back. So uh, thank you guys a lot for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I just want to share with you some of the ways that I think about Photoshop, looking at the channels, using blend modes, using smart objects, that ability to jump from Photoshop to back and forth and in camera raw or from Lightroom into Photoshop and work with smart objects is really kind of cool. And now that you understand some of these more advanced workflows, 
you might see how some of these tools can be combined to give you pretty cool results. So I use Perfectly Clear to get a great base exposure, and then sometimes I'll let my artistic vision kick in and take it just a little bit further. But a nice natural looking image, rich colors, great contrast, well, that's what Perfectly Clear is all about. All right, my name is Rich Harrington. I am the publisher of photofocus.com. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Remember, if you guys would like to take advantage of that Black, uh, Black Friday slash Cyber Monday sale, I think it expires tonight or tomorrow. Just head on over to Athentech, A-T-H-E-N-T-E-C-H, and you can download that. Uh, if you want to uh, try it out, well, you get 30 days on the free trial, so feel free to see what that works like for you. I hope you like it. Or you can buy it, get the 40% off, and still have the 30-day trial. And if you change your mind, just contact them and you can get it back. So thanks, guys, for tuning in. I really appreciate that. And uh, there you go. <laughs> have a good night, and uh, hope you guys all have a good holiday season. I really appreciate it. And uh, we're going to be starting a new contest in just a couple of weeks, thanks to the folks at Athentech. It's called New Gear for the new year, and you're going to have a chance to win a $300 gift certificate for a camera store, so you get whatever gear you want, and our friends over at Drobo are kicking in a Drobo and a bunch of other cool stuff, so you can get all your images backed up. So thank you guys. We'll have details on that on Photofocus coming up really soon. Have a good night.